Okay. Okay. It's now recording. Why is the school blocked? Oh, you're in your pajamas. <laughs> yes, I'll be in my pajamas forever. Um, okay, so last week we talked about the three tools of monetary policy. I will minimize this because y'all can't seem to like. I will. Uh, with that, no, I'll just put it over here. Okay. So, the three tools of monetary policy. What's the first tool of monetary policy? Oh, market operation, the buying and selling of bonds. Second one? R, 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 the required reserve ratio. And the third one? Daddy discount. The daddy discount rate. Yes, you should have this. So, this was if there's limited reserves. The problem is, we haven't had limited reserves since 2008. Now we have ample reserves, which means, just hold it. Just, which means that those tools don't work anymore. In fact, that's what the top of the thing says. It says the previous tools of monetary policy do not work in an economy with ample reserves. A small, uh, the amount of reserves is so large enough that small changes in supply and reserves do not actually influence the policy rate. Therefore, the central bank, the Federal Reserve, needs to use other tools to conduct monetary policy, and there's only one. So we have three tools to fix the economy with monetary policy if there's limited reserves. But if there's ample reserves, we only have one tool. So the tool of monetary policy, the one very tool, if I can get this to work. Oh, great. Is the interest on reserve balances, or IORB for short. The interest rate on reserve balances. Stop. Stop. The I order. Yeah, that's these two things. So we have the, like, magic globe thing for that's the look into my eye orb and then over here we have Steve Jobs introducing the eye orb because iPhone I watch iTunes you should show it to the camera. I understand that. I, I you'll just have to be here to see it in person I hate to take away okay so this is an interest rate but instead of an interest rate like that charges it's an interest rate that earns you interest and what it is is the interest rate that the Federal Reserve pays banks, pays commercial banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, pays commercial banks to hold excess reserves. So essentially, it's a savings account for a commercial bank. This is the Twitter thing. This is the Twitter thing. What is the Twitter thing? Don't worry about it. Okay. Let's see. So let's say that Carolina is a bank and she has all of this money in her vault. What? can she, as a bank, do with it? She can loan it out and charge her customers interest. She also, now, there's this new thing she could do with it. She could take this extra money, instead of loaning it out, she could actually store it in like a savings account, Alex, at the bank, at the Federal Reserve. So I'm gonna let you talk with a friend for a second. If I want banks to start loaning money out, would I, raise this interest rate so where they earn more money by saving at the Fed? Or would I lower this interest rate, well, make them saving less money at the Fed? Talk with a friend. Would I raise it, interest rate that they earn, or lower the interest rate that they earn? What was the question? So they have extra money. Banks have extra money in the vault. They could loan it out to a customer and charge interest or they could save their money at the Fed and earn interest. Either way, they'll get interest. So if I want them to spend more, if I want them to loan out more and stimulate the economy and do expansionary monetary policy, what should I do with the I or Raise or lower? Decrease, lower it. Lower the I-O-R-B, the interest on reserve balances. Should be lower. So this could be in that table right here. So there are three asterisks for limited reserve, but this double asterisk means it's available for ample reserves. So for expansionary, we're going to lower the IORB, but for contractionary monetary policy, well, we'll raise the IORB. Okay, what's the question? No? Okay. Not my question? Uh, no. Okay. No, she didn't. She didn't. I was, I was, I was, I was, okay. Mom, you have a question? What? You have a question? Okay. So this interest rate 
is an interest rate that banks earn. And they raise or lower it to like either incentivize them to save at the Fed or disincentivize them to save. And so it's like, I'm saying no, don't, to expand the economy, no, don't save money with the Fed, loan it out instead. But if I don't want them to loan it out, that's like, no, don't loan it out, save your money here and earn a high interest rate. So this is an interest rate that they earn. Okay, at the bottom of your page, you will see a brand new graph. This new graph is brought to you by our new tool of monetary policy. So let's look at it. Either of them are the same. They're the same. We're going to add some stuff to it. On the y-axis, it says federal funds rate. But that's a very Americanized version of it. But remember, the federal funds rate is also known as the policy rate. So right next to, on the y-axis, they're the same. Policy rate, federal funds rate. So that's on the y-axis, the policy rate, the federal funds rate. Remember, that's the interest rate that banks charge each other. This interest rate is the most important interest rate. You okay? Okay, can we can we get it together for this video to be good? Because I don't want to have to record it later on my own time. What? Fantastic, Galvin. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> on the x-axis, we have quantity of reserves. That is the quantity of, like, all the money at the Fed. That's what reserves are. So it's all the money at the Fed. It's like in their big vaults. There's the supply of reserves, and it's vertical, just like money supply is vertical, because that's like that's like an amount of money that's like in the vault. That's like a certain specific amount of money. And the demand curve looks a little wonky. It has like three separate sections. It's got a flat horizontal section. Then it slopes downwards, just like normal demand. And then it has a flat horizontal section again. But those flat sections, like, have a name. So what is DR? What do you think DR stands for? That's the discount rate. So this little ceiling of the demand curve, this is the discount rate. If I can spell correctly. Um, yeah, I don't know why they title it something different, but let's, let's call that the discount rate. I think that's probably the international title of the discount rate. As the y-axis, it's the whole y-axis. But this one's particularly, like, where the policy rate is right here is the discount rate. Is this where it makes sense that the says True. Yeah. And then here, where it bottoms out, where it's like horizontal again, that's the IOR. So that is the interest on reserve balances that we talked about. What's IOBR? Okay, yours says IOBR because tomato, tomato. So you can either call it the interest on reserve balances, like we do, or interest on excess reserves is another way. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. Okay. Luke, you good? Okay. Policy rate is the federal funds rate same thing. It's just the non-American title of it. Uh, this, this is the, the fourth tool of monetary policy, the IORB. Okay, let's take a look at this graph really quickly. And I erase some stuff. Oh, I guess it's fine. No, because it's already, like, it's split up for you. It printed in two separate graphs down here. So if we have a supply curve, that's intersecting in this downward sloping section. Do you see that on the very first graph on the left? It is intersecting right here. That would be if you have limited reserves. So technically, you can draw a limited reserve economy on either the money market graph or on your reserve market graph if you have the supply curve intersecting in this little section. So this is limited reserves, this section of the graph. If you have, though, on the right-hand side of the page, you see that the supply curve is intersecting at that flat section. Way the heck over here now. Right here. This is where you have ample reserves. So you could have a, an economy with ample reserves illustrated on this graph or an economy with limited reserves on this graph as well. And it makes sense that this one's limited over here because this is zero. If reserves are zero, like, that's not very many at all. So, like, the further away you get, the more ample of reserves you're going to have. And we are, right now, ample reserves on that flat section right there. 
Okay, turn to the inside cover of this. Since 2008. Yeah. Okay, so at the very top of the page, you will see the supply curve shifting in both sections. So on the left hand side, you will see the supply of reserves in the in like supply of reserves intersecting in the limited market, in the limited reserve market. And look, changing supply of reserves going up and down changes, it changes the policy rate. So remember, this is limited reserve. So we have OMO you can use, uh, bonds. You can uh, change and lower the RRR and the discount rate. Shifts the supply of reserves. And when it's limited reserves, look, the equilibrium does change. So if there is a change of these tools, it changes the supply curve and that changes the policy rate. And it works. The policy rate will change because the supply is intersecting at different little points here. And so the policy rate is actually changing when you have limited reserves and you do these tools. Unfortunately, these tools changing when you have ample reserves doesn't do jack to the interest rate. Like when you have this downward sloping section, the interest rate is changing when you shift supply back and forth. But when you shift supply back and forth, when you have ample reserves, this section down here, are interest rate, our policy rate doesn't change at all. And so these tools, while they shift supply for both graphs, so the same graph, they shift supply for the reserves, it does nothing when you have ample reserves, but with limited reserves, like we said last week, it does change the interest rate. So we have to figure out some other way because supply changing with ample reserves doesn't do anything. So it's going to change demand instead. Say it again? Change the I-orb. The I-orb, because that's, remember, that's the bottom part, right? So if we change the I-orb, now we're going to have some interest rate change. And that's what you see at the bottom of your paper here. At the bottom of your paper, you will see what it looks like to change the I-O-R-B. The AP test calls it changing the administered interest rates. Because administered means both the discount rate and the IORB. They're talking about all of the interest rates that they have control over. So look at your right hand side of the graph. Look at the little floor and ceiling going down. This is a decrease. So talk with a friend. Is decreasing these interest rates, is that expansionary monetary policy or is that contractionary monetary policy by decreasing these administered interest rates, so the discount rate and the IORB? Talk with a friend. Is this expansionary or contractionary? Okay, seems like we have consensus there. It's expansionary. This is what it looks like. So let's title your graph that on the left hand side. This is expansionary monetary policy with ample reserves. Why is it expansionary? Because changing this little floor, this IORB, this is the IORB going down. Look at the interest rate. Here's our first policy rate, our first federal funds rate. And then after the shift, here's our second one. Okay, interest rates are going down and that will shift aggregate demand. While this one here on the, on the right clearly is contractionary because now we're increasing the IORB is going up. And that'll make policy rates, the federal funds rate, also go up. And that's why it's contractionary, because it's raising interest rates. So this one over here, contractionary. Monetary policy with ample reserves. So those three tools that we talked about last week, bonds, the RRR and the discount rate all affect supply, supply of money on the money market graph, and supply of reserves. Unfortunately, in ample reserves, it doesn't do anything, which is why we have to do the IOR for ample reserves. Okay, that's our notes for the day. Do we have our board marker and eraser? Grab a board marker and eraser from over here if you need it.
Go, 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 go. Uh, oh, they can follow along with practice. Ooh. You're okay. Of history, yes. Yeah. It's pajama day for drug free week. Don't do drugs, just say no. All right. So, on your graph, let's draw a reserve market graph. Uh, what's on the y axis of the reserve market? Yes, we just looked at four different graphs. Policy rate. What's on the x axis? Quantity of reserve. If you just want to write quantity, that's fine. If you want to do quantity of R for reserve, that's fine too. Okay, always draw your demand curve first because your supply curve will change whether it's limited reserves or ample reserves. Supply really matters where you draw it. So let's draw the demand. Remember, it's horizontal. Downward sloping and then horizontal again. Demand of reserves. Big D, little r. Okay. If we're drawing it with limited reserves, where is our supply curve going to be if it's limited reserves? On the diagonal. On the diagonal, where it's sloped downwards. So throw it right there. Let's do this. Supply of reserves, and this is limited reserves. Where it intersects, boop, 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 policy rate one. But let, let's like really label it. What's that ceiling labeled? Discount rate, DR for discount rate. What about that floor? What is that labeled as? I-orb, I-O-R-B. So there's like a whole bunch of equilibriums that we're labeling. Only one of them is the actual equilibrium. The other one is just the floor and the ceiling. What is the discount rate? The discount rate is the interest rate that the Federal Reserve charges for loans. Okay, so see how it like flattens out? That means there's, no, there's never going to be a policy rate ever. Remember, policy rate means Fed funds rate. There's never going to be a Fed funds rate higher than the discount rate. And the reason that is, is because banks would take advantage of it. They would borrow money from the Fed at a really low interest rate and then charge their friends across the street a higher interest rate. That would be weird. Like that would bring some disequilibrium. You couldn't have that. So these two, at the most, the, the highest the federal funds rate could ever get is the discount rate. The lowest the federal funds could ever be is the IORB. So the equilibrium can only be between the highest discount rate and the lowest IORB. So if like the supply of reserves is way the heck over here, this would be the same interest as this. If the supply of reserves is way the heck over here, the IORB would be the same interest rate as this. So the the current federal funds rate is PR1. Yeah. Okay. So let's say the Fed sells bonds. The Fed sells bonds and we have limited reserves. Which curve is going to shift? To the? Is this expansionary or contractionary selling bonds? Okay. Buy big, sell small. You want money supply to be big, you buy. Buy bonds. If you want money supply to be small, you sell. So sell small money supply, buy big money supplies. Sell big, wait, buy big, sell small. So selling is contractionary. Contractionary is just supply to the left. Thank you, Carolyn. To the left. Let's draw it. Supply of reserves decreases and goes to the left because it's contractionary. No, as long as you're going left. Okay. It can go in another section. Okay. Yes. As long as you're going left, 
It's fine. Okay. Now erase your graph completely. All right. Now draw a reserve market just like we did, but this time draw it with ample reserves. I'm not going to give you a shifter just yet. I just want to see everyone's ample reserve market. So reserve market with ample reserves. So let's label everything correctly. <clears throat> Don't forget your axes. If you think you got it, let me see. Reserve market with ample reserves. Ample reserves. That is correct. Supply of reserves need to be labeled the S, the supply graph. Uh, SR. Demand needs to be labeled, Ryan. Good. Good. Uh, the lots of things need to be labeled. The demand curve needs to be labeled, and the discount rate needs to be labeled. That's good. Better. Yes. Thank you. Good. Okay. It's not money supply or money demand. It's supply of reserves and demand of reserves. You can just do S and D, honestly. Yeah, if you don't like uh, all the other letters, just do S for supply and D for demand. Uh, demand needs to be labeled, but you guys are good. Valentina, show, uh, show her yours and show demand. Matt, yes. Okay, don't erase. Don't erase. So it should look like this. Policy rate, quantity of reserves, demand, draw first just to help you out. Demand of reserves, and then we have ample reserves, so our supply curve is way the heck over here. Policy rate, or you could put IORB if you want, and then this is the discount rate. All right, let me give you a scenario. We have ample reserves. So buying and selling bonds, that's not going to work. That's not going to do it. I mean, it would sh still shift supply, but your equilibrium would be the same, so we're not going to draw that. Uh, discount rate, once again, doesn't do anything here. RR doesn't do anything. We only can change the administer of interest rate. So you can't like shift it to the left so far that it's the I have never seen an AP question. Of course, it's only been on the test one year. Um, I have not seen that. Yeah. Is it possible though? Sure. Why not? I just can't. It could. I've, there's only like so many questions that have been like put on College Board even about this, and last year it wasn't even on the FRQ, which means this year is it. Like 100% this year. Like that is my prediction. They introduced it last year. They weren't going to test it the very first year that it came out, but this is the year. Yeah, like in real life, freaking College Board. Yeah, forget college. I don't care what they do. I'm talking about like the American Federal Reserve. Um, Jerome. Jerome Powell. I don't know. You should write a letter to uh, the Fed. Okay, so they are lowering the administered interest rates. It says administered interest rates. That means both the discount rate and IORB. Sometimes I'll just change IORB. Uh, but if they say administered interest rate, they mean both. What would that look like on the graph? Look at your notes. Look at the little picture that you have. It's kind of weird. Draw it. Policy rate. That is correct. Try again. No, not backwards. Just look at your notes. That is correct. Arrows to show me change? No. Is it like the right way? Not actually right. Look at your notes. <coughs> no. Half right. It's half right. Where are you increasing? You're half right. You didn't do the top. You're half right. I don't really know enough what's going on with the top of your graph. It was here and now it's here. But I said administered, which means both. Like that? That's good. There we go. Okay. Yes. This is what your graph should look like. So here's how you do it. 
You draw down arrow here, you draw down arrow here, and then you go and then you're technically on top of the other one, so there's no point of redrawing it, but you're and then it just keeps on going like this. D R two. Demand of reserves two. But new equilibrium points. And yes, the policy rate will go down, which is why it's expansionary. Because now it's cheaper to take out loans from each other and banks will take out more loans and there will be more spending. Shifts to the just shifts to the right because interest rates are lower. And it'd be an upwards movement on the short run Phillips curve. All of the things. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it like, oh, mwah, love it. So, yeah, you add the floor gets lower and the ceiling gets lower, but your diagonal stays the same. Okay. So, okay, but, but the line, the point where you move from the diagonal to the, the, to the flat part on the bottom, it's closer to your supply. So, if you keep moving it down, would you end up being in the middle of that? I, I don't know if that's just the way that I drew it or if that's actually like the math behind it or if I'm just drawing it weird. Okay, okay I see what you're saying, yeah. but I could have just been drawing it weird. Okay, erase. Now let's draw it again. Still with ample reserves. Still with ample reserves. more and more we draw this, the easier it'll get. I mean, y'all freaked out the first time that we did uh, aggregate supply and demand. Now we're going to increase the administered interest rates. You need practice. Let's increase the administered interest rates. I want to see your board when you're done. Catherine, you all right? That is correct. That is correct. I put Q. I love how I didn't say the actual. Yeah, I've been doing this long enough. That is correct for all three of you. Good. Oops. You have no equilibrium. Good, Elizabeth. Good. 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 Oh, it's all gone. Yes. Uh, yes. Better, yes. Good. Okay. No, Valentina, this is a cool graph. It, it looks like a cool little snake. You know, see, it's like slithering around, and it's going up here and up here. So that means bloop, bloop, technically it's on the same thing, and then it's like woo, and demand and reserves there, equilibrium point, boop, 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 boop. policy rate two. Look at that higher interest rate that's going to contract the economy from a period of demand pull inflation, obviously, and aggregate demand will shift to the left, lowering both the crisis and the GDP. We're raising unemployment, but that's okay. We're just back at the natural rate. Okay. Um, e no, let's do one more. Huh? Let's do money market from, from last week. Let's throw a money market graph on here. This is where you log out? No. No. Uh, nominal interest rate, quantity of money, Money supply, money demand. <laughs> so technically, technically, this is like a zoomed in version on the reserve market. So the reserve market that has like that, like limited reserve section, this is a zoomed in version of that. Of the limited section, you don't see you don't see this leveling out and this leveling out, but you're zoomed into the, like the supply and demand. Yes. Yes, this only works with limited. You cannot show ample reserves on this. You can show limited and ample on reserves, but on the on the money market, you can only show limited. 
which means IORB cannot be shown here. But decreases the discount rate can. That's the scenario. That's a D, by the way. Lowering the DR. Daddy is cheaper. Discount daddy. Okay. Is that expansionary or contractionary? It is expansionary. Expansionary, just money supply to the money supply to the to the right. More money. More Catherine, you know this. More money to expand, less money to contract. Does that just make sense? E more boops. Good. Good. Uh, wherever the equilibrium is. Money supply two. Here's my new boops. And that lowers the federal funds rate, a.k.a. the policy rate, therefore expanding the economy. What is that graph called? That's a reserve market graph. Yes. Well, you know a section of the money market graph. No, reserve market graph. Yes. Okay, erase your boards, markers. I need them all up here. What are you doing? Oh, is that supposed to be me? It's me. It's Pennywise. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm blessing you. Yeah. Don't forget to uh, like, uh, follow, hit the bell for notifications, leave a comment below. Comment below your favorite.